Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're going to talk about Kathy Woods and I think that she's going to have a 10x comeback at one point. So does it mean that you should go buy the stock? Hell no. I wouldn't touch her ETFs with a 10 pole stick. But why am I saying what I'm saying? I want to show you in a video where we go through a video that she recently posted. She has some very, very interesting thoughts and I want to go over with you what they mean and how I would invest into her ETFs and when I would invest in, into them. So as always, if you like this content, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below this video. And if you wanna go one step further and support the channel, check out the first link in the description below where you can support the channel for five bucks a month and get access to all the tables and valuations, lots of cool goodies, go there and check it out. So here is the video that I'm talking about. It is titled Investing in Innovation and Embracing Volatility. And um, it's a long video, so I just took some sound bites that are very very interesting so here's the background ravaged in the last year it's about a year that it has been ravaged and raul uh, mentioned that when there is a change in expectations and last year as we were getting our vaccinations uh the the thought that the economy would open up and uh and interest rates would go up inflation would go up but would uh, be be tamed um, during, during the year, there was a change. The supply chain issues did not go away. And, uh, and so this fear about what inflation and interest rates are going to do has gripped the market. Uh, first, it gripped the innovation space almost exclusively uh, in a puzzling way. Uh, now it seems to be affecting the market a little more broadly. So I'm gonna cut a boring part here and go to the next important uh, part because this sets a really good background of where we are today and what has happened. And I very much agree with her analysis. Oil prices going up uh, are, are an incredibly burdensome tax. On, uh, on the lowest socioeconomic uh, uh, demographic sectors in our economy. So I think the, the fears here are going to shift from rising interest rates and, and higher inflation, uh, potentially to recession, especially, and you've heard me on this before, uh, because we see inventories piling up uh, throughout the ecosystem. We're in total agreement with Kathy Woods. I believe the same thing that, you know, the high oil prices and the very persistent inflation, which should have been transitory, is going to push us into a recession. So complete agreement between her and me there. Now, the, be, besides... Uh, interest rates and, and inflation, there's been a double whammy in the, uh, in the public equity markets. And I think this is what helps explain what's going on. The move to risk off for many traditional asset managers means get back to your benchmarks. And if you look at the broad-based benchmarks, even the broad-based tech benchmarks or tech-oriented benchmarks, uh, you're going to see that they are short innovation, uh, true innovation. Um, they're mostly in that the innovation that they're capturing is mostly in the mega cap tech stocks. They've become a disproportionate weight in, in many indices. And I would uh, submit in many assets, uh, I mean, portfolios in the tra traditional asset management world. So I want to point out something here. She's super correct in what she's saying, which I, I've also talked in many videos about this, that it's idiotic to change your investment strategy to investing in, you know, index funds uh, because the market has fallen so much. Because if you were not, again, this is only if you're changing. So if you were investing in growth stocks and, you know, you lost 70 or 80% of your money and now you decided, I want to be safe, and instead I move over to index funds and I'm going to be a long-term investor there. The reason why it's idiotic is because when the market sentiment turns and, you know, the inflation worries, you know, ebb, the growth stocks, they're going to go flying and the index funds, they're going to do their, you know, 10% per year. You basically rode the very volatile wave down and then you switched over to another horse where you have a chance of, uh, you know, riding a very low volatility horse, like a little bit up. So it's very idiotic. And then the second thing, which is super true, is that basically many of the investors that are super risk off now, it's a huge pendulum swing in the market. 
you're essentially saying that American innovation is dead. There's not going to be, you know, a next company that, that's going to disrupt a new company. And I just want to show you something that is very interesting. I found a list of the top market cap companies. This is just the last 20 years. I wanted to find one that was the last 30 years, but it still demonstrates the point really nice. So these companies were the top market caps in 1999. And if you were an index fund investor, then you would have put 100% of your wealth into these 10 companies. It's just Bear with me just for the example's sake. So you see it's Microsoft, General Electric, Cisco, Exxon, Walmart, Intel, NTT. I don't even know anymore what they do. I don't even know what this company does. BP and Nokia. So now let's look at the same thing in 2019 and look at how the list have changed. So Microsoft is still the leader of the list. As, as I said, if I would have found one from 1990, like from the beginning, Microsoft wouldn't even have existed at that point or would have been super young. You don't find any other company from the list still being here. So that means that your companies or your index fund investment from 19, you know, or the early 2000 would not have included any of these companies. And these companies were very busy disrupting your companies that were in the index funds. So these companies were destroying your portfolio while they were creating massive, massive value for shareholders that were investing in innovation. I really wonder what this list is going to look like in 20 years from now. I mean, already, you know, Tesla is not in here already just in a, you know, a few years, how this has changed, but let's go back to Kathy Woods. There are two other, um, there are characterizations of traditional research out there uh, that ARC has uh, actually uh, tried to capitalize on in terms of inefficiencies in the marketplace. Uh, the coverage uh, uh, in the traditional asset management world of analysts is broken down primarily by sector or industry or sub-industry. Uh, very specialized, very narrow, and as I mentioned before, typically very short term. Uh, and because of the siloization, uh, their ability to understand the convergences that are taking place between and among uh, the 14 technologies that, uh, uh, that we touched on today, uh, they're, they're not able to see them as clearly as we are. We are looking for them. And so the way we've set up our research, ARC is benchmark agnostic and long-term in its time horizon. Our investment time horizon is five years. And therefore, our analyst responsibilities uh, are set up in a way to encourage uh, uh, the collaboration uh, and, and explore the convergences uh, between and among these technologies. I love what she's saying. So basically, if you have a car company like Tesla and you put auto analysts you know, on the stock, they're going to completely misunderstand the stock because they don't understand innovation. They don't understand AI. They don't understand, you know, so many things and you're going to get a disaster. So she has a different way of, you know, valuing these companies. And in the end, we're going to go into very interesting details about this, but she has a different way because many analysts are like, okay, the S&P 500 is going to do 10% this year, which other company is going to do 10% and I'm not going to take any risks. And that also means that, you know, you're not going to significantly go down, but you're also not going to catch the next Tesla or, you know, the next growth story that is going to do 50, 60, 70% in a year. I really like how they have a very different, because they're comparing their performance to the future potential of the stock. So for example, you take Palantir, and you look at like, okay, what's the potential market cap of Palantir? It's, let's say it can be 200 billion if they reach certain targets. And then you go, okay, are they moving as we predicted that they would be moving? Is the business developing as we predicted? And if it's yes, then you don't give a flying F what the S&P 500 is doing because you see that long-term the company is going to go to 200 billion. So uh, innovation solves problems. And you heard uh, about a lot of the breakthroughs that are going to solve problems. We saw it last year with COVID. In the last two years, COVID, uh, innovation solved problems. We had tests and vaccines that no one dreamed we would have in the short time period that we, we, we got them. And it was all because of innovation. Uh, now we have supply chain issues. We have labor shortages. 
uh, we have the cost of capital going up and uh, we have automation of all kinds and we have DeFi. Um, and so we really do believe that uh, the, the, the innovation in, in, that we are researching is a wonderful complement to uh, the traditional asset management oriented portfolios, the traditional growth and value portfolios that are benchmark sensitive. Uh, because if we're right, there is going to be a lot of creative destruction in the traditional world order that is represented by the more traditional benchmarks. Uh, and, and if it, that is right, then um, a hedge uh, with innovation strategies is is not only appropriate, but uh, we think will be necessary. Again, she's saying that if they're right in their research, then, you know, their companies are going to destroy your index fund companies. And you would do very well and very wisely to, you know, at least hedge your portfolio with owning some art, which is very interesting because they have been seeing significant inflows this year. And like they are like 70% down this year. And you would expect that they are close to bankruptcy. And yet they're somehow experiencing like people wanting to invest money with them. And the only way to understand that is, you know, that you have big players who are thinking exactly how I'm laying it out in this video. And they're thinking, okay, I can have 90% of my investments in, you know, safe assets. And then I put 10% with Kathy Woods. And then if her stocks go flying and they destroy the other companies, then let's say this one goes 10 X and this one doesn't move anywhere. Then the portfolio overall is still doing very good. I especially like what she's saying here. Innovation solves problems because Again, we are having a situation with very sticky inflation, you know, worker shortages, supply chain issues, you know, the war in Ukraine. And which are the companies that are going to get us out of this situation? It's not going to be the Walmarts and the Netflixes. It's going to be the new companies like Palantir, you know, the Shopify's, the Teladocs. It's going to be, you know, Upwork, Fiverr, you know, and all these very innovative companies that will find new ways of doing things. And unfortunately, they will, in this process, they will destroy the, you know, old dinosaurs that they're disrupting. And that's just the natural way. That's just how it rolls. I guess I'll close uh, by this section by saying, you know, inflation and in interest rate risks seem to be uh, priced in uh, when you've had this kind of a correction and, and, the, and the broader market has, has joined in as well. Um, we... Um, we do believe that innovation is on sale and uh, and we do believe that it will be really important for investors to get to move toward the right side of change, given the amount of disruption that we do expect and that I hope our research today telegraphed to you. It's also very important to keep that five year investment time horizon the, the difference between linear growth and exponential growth when you're talking about a five-year period is enormous. And because Wright's Law gets us to, uh, I think, to the right answer in terms of the exponential growth trajectories, the surprises are going to be enormous. And most important, uh, we like to say as we're focusing on the five years, keep your eye on the prize. We realize it's been a very difficult market uh, we also do believe, and our conviction this past year actually has increased, that these exponential growth trajectories uh, have been accelerate, accelerated by COVID, and even more so now by the turmoil we're seeing in the labor markets, logistics, and in the financial markets. So it was an awesome interview, and we come to if you should invest in ARC. And I believe that there is two kinds of investors. So are you an active investor who does a research or are you an investor that is passive and you just want to, you know, invest into an ETF? If you are the later one, then you could start dollar cost averaging into Kathy Wood. Almost her fund is like 80 plus percent down and I don't know how much lower it can go. However, there is very easy ways if you're, you know, if you like doing research in companies, what I would do and I'm actually actively doing is... I would look up which companies Kathy would invest in and I would do research on those companies and 
the companies that I think have insane potential, I would start dollar cost averaging or have them on a radar, you know, when you feel that the macroeconomics have changed and I would start investing in those companies because some companies that she invests into, like for example, she was invested into Twitter. She has sold now. I don't know how that Twitter is an innovative company. Then, you know, she invested into GM, their autopilot, which is called GM Cruise, I think. And these are investments I don't understand and I would have never made. But what is important to understand when you're investing into ETFs is that her companies have so much potential that even if, you know, 90% of the companies fail and only 10% of the companies deliver and only 1% of the 10 companies does a 15 or 100x, her ETF is going to do amazing. So this is what's really misleading with her ETF is that she doesn't need at all, all the companies and all the growth stocks to rally for her ETF to do well. She needs her big bets to work out and she needs a few companies that she has invested in, you know, to hundred X, which growth companies can do. I mean, look at Tesla, look at Shopify, you know, look at Netflix when it was still a growth company. This is what growth companies do when you're right about them. It's just, how do you know which one is going to blow up? So, for my part, I'm going to research her companies and I will let you know which ones are interesting. And if you just want to invest into the ETF because you don't have time to do any research, this is not investment advice, but you know, I don't know how much lower her ETF can go, but it can still go lower. But if you start dollar cost averaging, you don't have a lot to lose. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.